Welcome back. Revolving Currents is an exhibition by two artists at Wheat Baker Lagos. Raki Basharung and Chika Idu use their different styles of art to address tropical issues such as climate change, education, and domestic violence. Aren't you tonight? Takes a look at how these artists push for change using their paintings and sculptures. <laughs> They come from different worlds. Basically, I work the, with the idea of power of number. I look at the I look at Nigerian situation, um, a country with over 150 million people, and I'm like, um, we have these resources that we need to harness, and that is our population in moving the country. You know, it's like you have many people that are working on the streets out there that are not doing anything. If you can get those people together and get them engaged in doing certain things, I believe um, the country will probably will begin to move forward. You know? And I'm looking at um, putting Nigeria on a comparative scale with a country like China, which has been able to harness its population to move that country to where the country is today in terms of um, political, um, economical, and social you know, growth. The developed countries, it is not like there's anything magic about what they do, all right? It is just as a result of the information they passed on their children, and the children grew with it. So Nigeria has to do the same. We need to come up with a plan and say, this is where we need to go, and everybody has to work towards achieving that goal. Right now, we are not passing enough positive information to our children. If we have, if we abuse our children, we are passing information without really passing information. If we allow our children to, to live and exist in an in unconducive environment, we are passing information to them without knowing or thinking that we are passing information. Rakib Basharun is a sculptor with a passion for using recycled materials to create his works of art. I don't think there's anything out there that is really a waste. It depends on who is looking at the material. You know, and today, the world itself is going green. The world is recycling. They recycle virtually everything. They recycle paper, they recycle wood, they recycle plastic, they recycle aluminum, they recycle metal, you know. So it's just one of those materials that we need to recycle. And I actually started using this particular medium at a point in time when um, the Lagos State Government did some road construction. And before you knew it, people started dumping all sort of trash you know, in the drainage. And I'm like, this thing they dropping in the drainage could actually be reused, you know, and be given new lease of life. While Chika Idu, who still has age on his side, is mad about painting. But despite the diverse ways they approach their art, that does not stop them from joining forces to present Evolving Current at Wheat Baker Lagos. We have a lot of uh, water dredging going on in our waters in Lagos and uh, I feel these uh, dredgers are very uncontrolled and uh, as a result of this they have damaged our seabeds. I have tried uh, extensively to see if I could see like water plants, sea anemones and the rest of them but we don't have them anymore, they are gone. If you look uh, at the bottom of the waters, right, in the rivers, uh, uh, in the lagoons, what you're going to see is mainly refuse under the water, nylons or brown sand. But you hardly see plants living under water anymore. So I, I think there should be, I, I think there should be, we have gotten to the point where we need to shout, where we need to make some noise so that we can do something about uh, the problems that our waterways are currently facing. There is art of all shapes and sizes done in various media considering the background of those being exhibited. This exhibition also tries to bridge a generation gap by bringing an old and young mind together.
for Sports News now. Carno Pillars, but uh, this evening, this evening, uh, beat visiting Lagos based team Ikorodu United two goals to one to continue to put pressure on league leaders Inugu Rangers. Emmanuel Edmond opened scoring for Pillars after 15 minutes, but visiting Ikorodu United restored parity on 27 minutes when Yemi Olashapo headed home. However, captain Rabiu Ali got the winning goal in the 77th minute. Pillars are second on the table with 27 points from 15 matches, a point behind leaders Rangers. The pass coming through, the flag stays down and the pass is rolled across a good one and the header and that is the equalizer. Would you believe it? Not, they made it look so easy. It's almost on the... In the blink of an eye, it's just uh, 75 minutes gone. Just the 15 left. And we did pass a minute. Uh, United look like uh, able to get something. Able to get something, and what a goal that was. It had to come from only one man on that pitch. Meanwhile, in other NPFL matches played today, Enugu Rangers are back on top of the league standings despite dropping their first points at home this season and a one-all draw with shooting stars. Plata United were held to a goalless draw by Sunshine Stars and Rivers United recorded the only away victory in Week 15 with a 1-0 defeat against Worry Wolves. Wiki Torres of Bochi beat Nasara United 2-1. Aqua United beat FC Ifanyuba 2-0, while Lobi Stars pipped MFM FC 1-0 at home. The defending champions, Aimba, also recorded a 2-1 against Niger Tornadoes. Stephen Davis scored twice as Southampton came from behind to beat second place Tottenham 2-1 in the English Premier League. Son Hong Min put Spurs in front at White Hart Lane after 16 minutes. Davis equalised a false Southampton on 31 minutes and the Saints midfielder put his side ahead in the second half. Manchester City's top four chances are in the balance after they twice give up a lead to draw to all with Arsenal. Arsenal lead a point at home to already relegated Aston Villa over the week, next weekend to clinch Champions League qualification for the 20th successive season. Liverpool remained eighth after they earned their first Premier League win in three games by beating Watford 2-0. PSV Eindhoven today snatched the Dutch League title from Ajax on a dramatic final day of the season. The teams went into the last day level on points with Ajax in control by virtue of having a six-goal advantage in goal difference. But the Amsterdam side could only draw one all with Loli de Graafschip to open the door to their rivals. PSV took advantage as two Luc Dong Yong goals and one from Jurgen Lokadia gave them a 3-1 win at Peg Zwolle. In tennis, world number one Novak Djokovic earlier today defeated Andy Murray to win the Madrid Open title for the second time. A serve was taken to a deciding set before prevailing 6-2, 3-6-6-3 in the Spanish capital to record his 15th successive victory over other top 10 players. In a thrilling battle, the serve came out on top in a little over two hours to claim a record fifth Master Series win in the last sixth his 10th in the last 14 and record 29th overall and a record 29th overall bigger pardon now it means murray drops down to world number three with roger federer overtaking him when the new atp rankings are released on monday
73 people have been killed following the collusion of two buses and a fuel tanker on a major highway in Afghanistan. Officials have counted over 50 other people sustained injuries in the accidents. They've been taken to hospital in Ghazni province. All three vehicles were set ablaze after the collusion on the main road linking the capital Kabul to the southern city of Kandahar. Accidents are common in Afghanistan where roads are often in a poor state. The director of the provincial traffic department, Muhammadullah Ahmadi, said the crash was caused by reckless driving. However, good news from Canada. The wildfire ravaging the province of Alberta appears to have reduced in speed after initial reports suggested it could spread quickly. Its advance has been fueled by hot weather and tender dry terrain, and officials warned only significant rainfall would halt its advance. Firefighters have held key areas, and the blaze now covers about 1,610 square kilometers. It could be months now before the fire is fully brought under control. Over 100,000 residents of Fort McMurray have fled the blaze. Air quality warnings have been issued for Sakshuan and Northwest Territories, with locals advised to close windows and doors due to smoke. The fire is expected to be the most expensive natural disaster in Canadian history, with insurance costs alone already running into billions of dollars. United States Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump says taxes for rich people may be increased if he becomes president. This appears to be a reversal of his initial policy. Speaking during an interview, he also reversed his position on the minimum wage. He says he's yet to decide in terms of numbers, but he thinks people have to get more in terms of wages. He had previously said he is against increasing the minimum wage. Mr. Trump, who looks set to become the official Republican candidate for the November presidential election, says he's allowed to change his policies. However, several top Republicans, including the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Paul Ryan, have said they will not vote for him. And the main news again. The Nigerian military today warned mischief makers against a breakdown of law and order as the defense headquarters pledged to maintain the tempo of attacks on terrorists and cattle rustlers. Also today, some South-South governors met in Delta State to discuss security concerns and the forthcoming National Convention of the People's Democratic Party. Finally, 73 people were killed today in a road accident involving a fuel tanker and two buses in Afghanistan's Ghazni province. That's news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.